Welcome to an episode of Roxy's Ride and Inspire for complete mountain bike newbies. So if you're starting with mountain biking, then here are my 10 tips for you. And these are the things that I would have loved if someone would have told me when I started riding, and which is why I want to share them with you today. Tip number one is the size of your bike. I'm pretty tiny. I'm 158, which is 5'1", and which is why I usually have to ride bikes which are a little bit too big for me. This one is the smallest frame size there is, and as you can see, it's pretty big. However, and that's really important when you're choosing a bike, make sure that you can reach, reach the floor with your feet on the floor flat when you're standing on the top tube. So you don't wanna be on tiptoes and you really wanna be able to stand flat with your feet on the floor when you're standing over your top tube. That is one indication that the bike is good for you from the size. And the next one is that the length of your upper body should be almost this length so that when you're standing on your bike, which I will be coming to in one of my next parts, then you wanna be able to reach the handlebar nice and easily. Tip number two is saddle height. I see a lot of people who ride their saddle too low because they think that they have to be able to reach the floor when they are sitting on the saddle. In fact, this is how you actually set the saddle height. Although of course, if you can have a professional bike fitting, then go for it. But this is the first way to start with. You want to place your heel on the pedal and drop the pedal to the lowest position. And then the saddle height is perfect when your leg is fully stretched. So then if you place your foot on the pedal like you would when you're pedaling with your mid foot on the pedal axle this way, then you have a slight bend in your knee. So too high would be, for example, now if I'm stretched with my leg, although I'm in the ideal position, and too low would be when I have my heel on it and I still have a bend. Okay, so you want to set it with your heel on your pedal that your leg is stretched. So when you place it, then you have a slight bend in your pedal. If you have questions about this, always drop me a comment down in the comment section below. Tip number three is, do you need a dropper post or not? A dropper post is one that has this droppable seat height adjusting thing, either from here, some also have it below the saddle. My tip is yes, you do. Of course, it is a budget thing as well, but it does improve your riding immensely. You can move around on your bike much easily. You can get on and off your bike much easily, so much more easily. So it is really worth it. And I will be getting into this as we move along this video. One more question I get a lot of times is clipless pedals or flat pedals. So I ride flats, as you can see, and I highly advise you to ride flats. The reasons, and I don't want to re I don't want to get into this really deeply right now because it is a discussion that will go on forever. But these are my top three reasons why. One is you can transfer everything, everything you learn on flats to clipless pedals. Clipless pedals are the ones you are attached to automatically. They're usually smaller and they mechanically connect you to your bike. On flat pedals, you can always float off. However, you learn the clean technique. So everything you learn here, each technique you learn, you can transfer them to clipless without a problem. It does not work the other way around. So if you start off with clipless pedals and then you wanna transfer it to flats, you will probably note that you keep floating off your pedals. So what the clipless pedals actually did is they masked your deficiencies, which is why I really advise you to start with flats and then see if you actually want to transfer to clipless ones. I used to ride clipless and I swapped to flats about eight years ago and I'm never going back because they just improved my riding so much. And this brings me to advantage number two, which is that you can get off 
and on your bike really easily. With clipless pedals, you usually need the time to clip in and to clip out, and this takes time. So really, the ability to get on and off your bike really quick with flats is one of the other main advantages. Reason number three why I prefer flats is that a lot of times you hear that you need clipless pedals to pull when you're riding uphill. This has actually been proven wrong a few times, but it's still kind of lingering in our industry that clipless pedals are the better pedals. It's not that I'm anti clipless pedals, it's just that I'm pro flat pedals. And I will link also a video below this where you see that clipless pedals are not actually more effective than flat pedals. They did test it and also a really good article. They are below in the description. My next tip is about shifting and shifting of course always depends on which gears you have. However, this applies to any type of shifting you have. You want your shifting to be silent. So if you're hearing loud clonk, 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 then you're not shifting correctly or your shifting is not set up correctly. However, let's assume it is set finely. So what you wanna do is, if you have pressure on your pedal, then you also have pressure on your chain. So when you're shifting, your chain cannot jump up and down. So you want to surge a little bit before you shift, then you wanna soft pedal while you're shifting, and then you can speed up, so surge again afterwards. So soft pedal while shifting and you will hear it. If you're hearing loud clonking noises from your shifting, then it's trying to tell you something. So try to make it nice and silent. My next tip is about the stance on your bike. So you will note that you have a preferred stance. What do I mean with that? I mean that you will feel better when one foot is at the front. For me, my preferred stance is right foot at the front and this is how that looks. Of course, I'm showing you in a stationary way now. We are talking about rolling. You wanna put your, place your foot with your, the ball of your small toe on the axle or slightly in front. And also I have a really good article where this is described, which I will be linking below, why you wanna do this in contrast to placing it like this, like you might know from clipless pedals, or like this. So this is where you wanna place your foot on the pedal. You will have your preferred foot at the front and you will, you can find this out. So ride a little bit like this, see how it feels and ride with your other foot at the front and then just choose the one that feels more natural. I usually advise my coaching clients to stay with their preferred foot for practicing most things because otherwise it'll just take them the double time if they're practicing left and right, it's like learning to write with your left and your right hand. So stick to one side and here and there, you can always practice the other side because it does give you more versatility, but you don't have to do it on every session. When you're riding in your preferred stance, then you want your full weight to be on your feet 50-50 and you wanna have almost no weight in your hands. So heavy feet, light hands. And the great thing is, your crank is free, so it can move freely when you're riding it. And as soon as you stand 50-50, then your cranks will always level out. Here are a few pictures and a few videos of me riding steps and a little steep terrain, so you can see what I mean with that. Because a lot of times people say, move back, move forward, move on your bike. You don't actually have to do that. What you do is you stand on your feet and your bike moves beneath you. I also have a detailed video about this, which I will be linking below in the description, but here are a few videos of me demonstrating what I mean. My next tip is the high low range. What you want to be doing on your bike is riding high to save energy. And sometimes you want to get nice and low for example, before steeps or steps to let the bike move beneath you. This high low range is something you really have to get used to using on your bike. So you're always standing heavy on your feet and getting high and low as the terrain dictates. Raking, also a topic I hear the adventurous things about. 
point one is you only want to use your index finger and you want to grab the brake on the outer section. You want to have your grip gripped also on the outside and your index finger is reaching to your brake. And you want to always use both brakes in a modulated way. This means you don't want to open and close, grab and let go. What you want to do is you want to modulate the brakes to avoid skidding. You always want to use both brakes because your front brake is actually the stronger brake and if you mainly use your rear brake then you will start to skid in no time. So use both brakes, modulate them and concentrate on avoiding skidding wheels. Then you will automatically start to use your front brake more and get a feeling for your brakes. Vision is one of those tips I've had so many people when I start started telling me just have to look far ahead and then you'll be fine. But here's the thing, if you're traveling slowly and you might be in the beginning, which is totally okay and it's very, very wise to know your limits and to ride slow before riding fast and hurting yourself. So if you're riding at a slow speed, then you might not have to look all the way far away. So look where you want to go about one to two seconds where you will be going next. So that really depends on how fast you're traveling. The important thing is that you really start to concentrate on, I want to look where I want to go. Because a lot of people, and this is just our brain trying to save you, look on the stone they don't want to ride on. Look onto the tree they don't want to ride against. And obviously you're going to ride where you look. So force yourself to look where you want to go, but not too far ahead to scan your way and to look where you want to be riding. My last point for today to make you to a safer rider faster is the dismount. Dismounting is how to bail off your bike in a safe manner. I have a video about this, which I will be linking below, but I just want you to know before you start riding steeps and steps and everything that is scaring you, practice those bails practice those dismounts. They are your sheet anchor. And as soon as you know, hey, I can always get off if I don't want to ride it, you will start feeling safer and you will see that your fear level starts to drop. I really hope you enjoyed my 10 tips of today. And if you would like me to continue with my videos, buy me a coffee, the link is below in the description. Share it with friends, click subscribe and watch my next video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.